Hello friends, welcome to Electrical Design Engineering YouTube channel. This is our lecture number 32. Actually, this lecture is the continuation lecture of our see, lectures from 29, 30, 31 and this is 20, 32. In this lectures, we are actually discussing the relay coordination and in the today's lecture, we will discuss about transfer of primary side protection, inverse currents coordination time interval between relays before starting the lecture i want to ask you a small question the question is what is the iec standard for lv circuit breaker we will give you four options one option is the correct option you have right what is the correct answer what is the correct option of our uh, iec standard for lv circuit breaker in the comment section and i will pin the right answer you can also we can also do answer to this question in our telegram group and in our telegram cha whatsapp channel the links of the these channels and group are groups are given in my description you can join there the four options are iec 0976 iec 0977 iec 0947 and iec 0987 these are the four options and you have to choose the right answer what is the iec standard for lv circuit breaker now moving further in this lecture first of all we should know about coordination time interval between relays there are two relays static relay and static relay. this is the downstream protection devices and these are the upstream protection devices these are the coordination time interval between as per the iec triple i triple e std 242-2001 here the static relay and if, if in the downstream one is the static relay and in the upstream same static relays then the coordination time interval between two static relays should be 0 0.2 seconds so transfer of primary protection should provide a backup protection for secondary side relay primary protection on faults on transformer primary side protection during transfer of inverse currents and stability during the through faults so we should know about some little bit information we should know about the inverse currents the inverse currents is the initial surge of the currents that flows into a transformer when it is first energized this surge can be significantly higher than the transformer's normal operating currents Inverse current can be 5 to 10 times higher than the transformer's rated current. This is because the magnetic core of the transformer is not initially magnetized, requires a large current to establish the magnetic field. Now we will move to the ATAP software and perform the relay coordination for the remaining part of the uh, system. This is the diagram, this is the system electrical system which we are discussing. We have completed this portion and we have also completed this portion. Now we are in this portion. Now in today's lecture we will provide a coordination between this portion up from this to this portion. Okay. First of all, we will provide a relay coordination between relay 1 and relay 2 and relay 3 so we can select that much portion of the system ok and go to star view and little bit make a zoom to the this diagram and go to here ok relay 1 this is the relay 1 characteristics and it is already set and it is local it cannot be changed now and the relay second this is the uh, characteristic of the relay second and we can provide is we can double click on the relay and we can see first of all we can check the transfer of full load current on secondary side the transfer of full load current on secondary side is 2667 we should consider that our transformer can be operated up to 10 percent overload it is capable of uh, operating at a 10 percent of overload so on the 10 percent of overload what should be our current so to calculate that 
we should calculate the ten um, percent overload current. What we should be that that we should try two six six seven. That is the full load current of that transformer on secondary side multiplied by one point one zero. It becomes two nine three three. So our uh, second current on the secondary side should be two nine three three. So we should provide a relay setting based on this current. Okay. For that we can go to relay two and our pickup should be, we have considered pickup our zero point nine eight and that means that in the primary side the current should be two nine four zero. So uh, actually our ten uh, percent of current is two nine three three and we have considered two nine four zero. This is almost same. So our pickup is set. Now second thing is that we should see what is the coordination time interval between these. Two relays. That is the relay one. This is the relay one curve, and this is relay second. What should be the coordination time interval between two relays? Uh, that is why I have shown in early from this, uh, of this video that coordination time interval between two relays is 0.2 seconds. So we will first check what is the coordination time interval between two. We can take here from the time difference. And this is the arrow. When click on this arrow, it will go down. Change your direct downwards, and I click here. We should measure the uh, coordination time interval at the power uh, at the fault point. Okay, it is zero point. I even can zoom it for you. It is zero point four seven two, which is greater than zero point two. So we have to set the coordination time interval. We can select this relay and go to this way and little bit. Bring down it is 0.39 now and bring more down it is 0.27 a little bit more it is 0.207 see it is almost 0.2 seconds now this relay has been set for the phase now we can shift to the ground for see this is the ground status. The very haphazard system is here, and we can first of all we can make this relays to set and coordinate. This is relay two. This is the color of the relay two, and this the relay th three is this color. Uh, we can our coordination should be like that. The first characteristic color should be relay one, then relay two, and relay three. So we can double click on relay three and go to ground. In the ground, I can check. We can do it 0.3 and very inverse and click OK. OK. Now it is a little bit upside. We can see. OK. OK. Now, first of all, we should see what is the coordination time interval between the two relays. That is relay one and relay two and relay two and relay three. This relay that is the relay in the ground of the transformer, neutral grounding of the transformer, it provides a backup protection to the relay too. So his uh, pickup and uh, his uh, coordination time should be comparable to the relay too. So we can take the time difference and check here the difference of the time. It is 0 0.3, it is 0 0.356. I can zoom for you. 0.356 okay i will try if it get us i do not think we can uh, decrease it because if we decrease our uh, it will become overlap with the see this becomes overlap with the relay one characteristics so we can try best to my okay that much is possible so we cannot change it now we can we can see the time difference between relay two and relay third. Uh, it is zero point four. So this can be a little changed because it is almost uh, there is a gap. Something we can try. Okay, how much? It is zero point three five five seconds. Okay. <laughs> Now our two relays are we have been coordinated for phase and ground. Okay. Now 
now <coughs> we can try to log this release we can change here the time dial is 0 0.3 okay you can it is okay we can check this one 0 0.3 it is well okay now we can log this release and info and log and okay and we can also go to info and log okay and we can double click it info one minute uh, and it is already locked okay now we have locked this uh, coordination between relay 1 relay 2 and relay 3 okay now we can go back to the SLD that is this diagram now we have coordinated the relay 1 with the relay 2 and relay 3 now we can coordinate the relay 2 with the relay 4 that is upside the uh, transformer on the second primary side of the transformer so for that we can select uh, this portion with relay 2 okay and go to the star coordination star view and this is the relay 2 and this is relay 4 relay 1 1 is already coordinated and relay 4 we have to coordinate okay first of all i can zoom it one minute i can zoom it here and i can double click on the relay 4 i can click okay now first of all we can see what is the time, time difference actually this is almost coordinated i have already worked on this this is like we have coordinated the remaining relays coordination between relay 2 and relay 1 same you have to follow this here but one thing is that uh, i can click here uh, see the full load current on the primary side of the transformer I can show you that here what will the full load current on the primary side of the transformer is 175 and if you take uh, 175 you can multiply by 10 percent that is 175 into 1.10 it becomes around 175 multiply by 1.10 that is 10 percent of overload that is 192 192 so we have to coordinate this relay for a pickup of 192 we have 184 that is we can change it to this 194 okay now this is coordinated now what you have to check what is the time difference between these two what is the time difference between two one and one okay kill okay it is 0 0.58 i can zoom you can see 0 0.518 0 0.518 we can manage it like this we can decrease it it is 0 0.3 try to get 0 0.2 we can move oh it is Oh. okay keep it 0 0.2 seconds now the coordination time between the two is 0 0.2 seconds okay we can check here okay okay it is 0 0.2 seconds here okay at the fault point now the relay 2 is coordinated with the relay 4 now here we have achieved one first criteria that the primary the relay on the primary side of the transformer that is the relay 4 should provide a backup protection to the relay second now 
we have to set the relay for for stability for through fault uh, through fault this can be taken in the next lecture thank you